Hi, everyone. I'm Jordan Greer, owner of GT Planet, and I'm joined today by Chaz Draycott, our lead video producer, and two very special guests, Dr. Kaushik Subramanian and Takuma Sino, two Sony AI researchers involved in the development of Gran Turismo Sophie. First of all, welcome to both of you, and, and thanks so much for joining us today. For anyone who may not uh, know you, feel free to introduce yourselves and uh, what you work on. Sure, I can go first. My name is Kaushik Subramanian, as Jordan mentioned. Um, I am a senior staff research scientist at Sony AI. And uh, sort of going to my background, I've been working on reinforcement learning for quite a while now. It's been several years. And ever since I joined Sony AI, I have been part of their Game AI project. And it's been sort of GT Sophie from the start right until now. Uh, I'm Takuma Seno, and I'm a senior research scientist working for Sony AI. And I'm also working with Kaushik. Um, to um, like work on GD Sophie project. And I'm also nearly uh, um, a member of the uh, GD Sophie project, uh, nearly since the beginning of the project as well. And yeah, I have been working for Sophie for nearly five years. Great. Well, of course, we've, we're talking to you guys today because we have a new update to Gran Turismo Sophie called 2.1 mm -hmm. and it's a big update and uh, I I'll let you guys uh, explain uh, what's what's new and what you've added uh, to this feature. Absolutely. Um, I think sort of looking, reflecting back on where we started, I think it was sometime in February, 2023, where we had like a limited time, time limited release, four tracks, four cars that the players could use and um, sort of building up from that, you know, expanding to a lot more cars. I believe Sophie 2.0 had about 340 cars and maybe you know definitely more tracks uh and the player feedback that we got from that was great because of course they were able to sort of you know have fun but it was, it was always trying to find ways where we could give them more control over the races themselves with 2.1 we're giving the players back that level of control so now players can sort of pick sophie cars from over like 400 cars they have about 19 tracks to sort of drive in and they can customize these cars. They can set tire consumption rates, fuel consumption rates. Yeah, all of those options are now available to the player to create the races that they want to create. Um, mostly, uh, Kashik talked about everything I wanted. I wanted to say, but um, probably Kashik mentioned that Sophie can drive over nearly 400 cars on all 19 trucks. But actually, depending on tracks, Sophie can actually drive over nearly 90 percent. 95 percent of cars available to the track. So mm -hmm. depending on track, but yeah, Sophie is actually able to drive many, many cars right now compared to that, what we have provided in the past. And th this update seems to be one of the most exciting and well-received that you've had. So obviously, congratulations on that. Uh, what's the most prominent piece of player feedback that you've had from 2.1 that you've seen so far? Yeah, we actually saw many feedback uh, from the community. Uh, and yeah, many people say that yeah, now it's very competitive or it's more like human-like behavior uh, compared yeah. to what we have provided in the past. But more like we are glad to see that many people say that um, it is game-changing and it is the best AI racing experience, experience that they ever had before. So that actually makes us very, very excited. I can bet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you see comments like, as Takuma mentioned, game-changing or best AI, it's very rewarding for us to sort of see that because we've put in a lot of work mm -hmm. to have the AI behave as it is right now. And so to see players recognize that, it's amazing. And players right now are exploring all the options they have in the game. They can see a bunch of fun different cars on these different tracks, and they're trying a few different things. And so having them explore all these options is fantastic. And it's similar to how I did on, on our very own channel as well. You know, exactly. re recently right. with the, the sort of production cars that I made, you know, low powered little hatchbacks that they were all of a similar performance level. But the important thing was that they were all different cars. You know, they, they had their own little characteristics and advantages and disadvantages. And to see that even then the field was so close, but there were human like behaviors, like you say, it's, it is incredible to race against. You forget sometimes that it is an AI. It's really, really good like that. Very happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, and I've got to say, of course, I've been following the development of Sophie from the beginning, and I've read the papers and, and you know, really tried to understand how it works. And when I saw the announcement of Sophie 2.1, I thought, how did they do this? <laughs> and so I'm so glad that we got the chance to speak to you guys, because what um, 
you know, trying to wrap my head around how this works, it, it, you know, how were you able to integrate uh, car tuning and car customization and, and in, into the Sophie agent so that it's able to just handle this? Because, you know, the more I thought about it in preparing for this interview and the more I thought about how this would work, the more impressed I became because, you know, you can do basically anything to the car and Sophie just handles it and humans can't even do that because if I go and tune a car and and change something I'm probably going to be driving off track the first couple of, of corners <laughs> but Sophie just sort of handles it so I mean it's I know it's a broad question but I mean I'm I really want to know uh, how did you guys do this so probably um, I can highlight two points here and uh, the first one is that uh, we uh, expanded the observation like input of agents. Now we have added a lot of information about how car is tuning, how is car is tuned or customized uh, depending on how user interact with the car. So the agent knows what changes the user made uh, when it drives car. And that's kind of the first point. And second point is that we actually developed a new training scheme to adaptively changing how to collect data uh, based on how uh, how Sophie performs. For example, Sophie is struggling with the specific part of the race. We, let's say, increase the, the amount of data for that kind of scenarios so that in the end, uh, Sophie is experiencing all kinds of data Sophie needs to learn from. So probably that those two points are uh, something we could highlight to address those points. Yeah, and I want to highlight the second point that Takuma mentioned. And in fact, he actively worked uh, on this part, so he would be the best person to answer this question. But I want to highlight that that adaptive selection of cars, because as you mentioned, players can do an incredible amount of things with these cars. They can tune them in amazing ways. And so when we're able to recognize that a certain car is difficult to drive, we want to give the agent more experience with that car. Mm -hmm. And so that was a key component to make sure that we can sort of deliver on different kinds of cars. Now, I'll be very honest, it's not perfect. There are definitely cases where people can tune cars that Sophie's unable to drive, but it's it's pretty good in terms of the range that it has. Well, much like humans as well, you know, we're not perfect either. The the video that, that I did just, just a few days ago, they've uh, the latest daily races are the Amuse S2000 at Sakuba, and just trying to, to balance that thing on the brakes and on the throttle is almost terrifying you know it's a crazy crazy car and and you know, that imperfection and that sort of balance of being in control and not being in control is again what makes it so human so i suppose it's it's behavior like that that makes it so lovable at the same time to race and and that was a question we were going to raise next were there any unexpected behaviors that sophie sort of showed in learning to test these customized and tuned cars yeah that's a great question i I can't take credit, it's Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. When, when we were sort of thinking through what kind of surprises we had, somehow both of us, we, we didn't, I guess, see too many surprises. And I think that's largely due to the fact that there is a whole sort of diverse range of cars available in the game. Once you mm -hmm. give the agent access to those cars, the generalization actually works quite well. And yeah. it was able to sort of do a good job on a lot of those cars. Um, and I guess going into it, we weren't quite sure what was going to happen. And when we finally got the output and we saw that we were like, all right, not bad. It's actually doing quite well. And that's in a way a lot to do with the range of cars that are available in the game. GT7 has so many cars mm -hmm. following sort of a wide spectrum of sort of just like specifications that if you give that kind of data, the agent can generalize quite well. Yeah, I suppose you go into it already knowing what the minimum and the maximum of, of things are, I suppose, of what the, the slowest car is capable of to the fastest car. So I, I suppose you're already creating the sort of perimeter fence, aren't you, a little bit of, of what it needs to do. Right. And then you got players sort of pushing that perimeter further and further. But yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the, uh, you know, I, I think generalization is sort of a key word here because uh, from the beginning of Sophie, again, as, as, as I understand it, you know, it was all about training a car on a track and, and now it's, it's more of like training this agent to drive a lot of different things. And uh, for me as a, as a programmer, I'm not, I'm not an AI researcher, but I have a background in, in programming computer, computer science and that sort of thing. You know, you take you have a program and you give it a lot of different inputs and you generally have an idea of, of what that range of input is going to be. And then you 
test all those outputs to see if it breaks and, and how it breaks. And, and you, you test those uh, extremes. With this type of, of program, and, and as it becomes more generalized, uh, it seems like the, the testing scenario would just be astronomical. I mean, almost infinite uh, at this point, especially with tuning. So I'm curious if you can explain now how this testing process works when you when you come out with a new version of the agent that that could be released in the game uh what what happens behind the scenes uh in order for this to be signed off on and, and eventually released to the public yeah i can highlight some of the points uh in the test our testing process probably first of all um i think you're pretty good uh to guess what happened behind the scene uh, we actually have some scenarios to test let's say engine swapped cars because engine swap kind of easy way to produce kind of extreme case, uh, edge cases. So we have some specialized scenarios to test agent's ability with the engine swap cars to see how agent performs with those specific cars. And also, uh, yeah, now we, we are supporting 19 tracks uh, and Sophie 2.1 is supporting all of those tracks. So meaning that we also kind of design a large scale kind of benchmark to make sure that uh, agent is uh, doing okay in kind of each scenario, and we also with the engine swapped cars as well. Entire testing pipeline is actually pretty massive uh, because we need to make sure that agent is doing okay under uh, any conditions uh, that is possibly happening in the uh, user side. I want to also add that kind of every week uh, we brought our new version of AI to the uh, PDI, uh, for Digital Game Studio. Then we kind of get feedback from the game studio every week. Then they, yeah, gave us very, very valuable feedback. Then we also kind of tweak the behavior of agent based on the comment they gave us. I'm curious at this stage of development, how does the collaboration process uh, work with Sony AI and Polyphony Digital? So are, are you guys developing new features in the agent? And you mentioned every week you send them a, a new version. So are you developing new features and new ideas and sending it to them? Or are they sort of defining the specs that they want? And then it comes back to you guys to, you know, see how you can solve those problems. What, how does that, how does that process work? Yeah, I, I can talk about this, but we work very closely with Polyphony Digital all the way from the start of the project right until now. And that involves like meetings with them very often. We meet with them. We sort of work through our progress. They have feedback. We sort of chart out a plan that we sort of talk through and try to find ways in which we can make the player experience as fun as possible. And so we work very closely with them to make this a reality. And as Tukuma mentioned, we meet with them both on sort of online calls as well as in person uh, in Tokyo as well, where we get their feedback, make sure that we're not missing anything. They are, of course, the domain experts, right? So they know aspects about the way the game works that we don't have as easy access to. Mm -hmm. And so their guidance helps us sort of bring out the best with GD Sophie. And that's when you have Sophie 2.1. It works very well hand in hand then. Um, what, what about the rain? Sophie doesn't drive in the rain at the moment. Is there a particular reason for that? Or is it just something that's more in the pipeline in the future? The short version is the latter part of what you said. So for us, we're always trying to find ways to expand what the agent is capable of. So there are always parts of the game where it's like, oh, what would Sophie do under this condition? And so in that sense, we're always trying to find ways to improve on and see what the agent can do. Because on our side, uh, we do know there are parts of the game that Sophie isn't there in, and we're going to constantly sort of work to explore that space. Yeah, it's, it's just more variables to add into the mix that I already mentioned, isn't it, really? with Exactly. It now imagine like process. you have all these tracks to evaluate, all these sort of cars to evaluate. And as you add more and more dimensions, as Tukuma said, that test pipeline just is going to get bigger and bigger. It's just one massive spider web, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's scary to imagine it from this side as well, though. And, and hats off to the amount of work you do. It must be incredible. But I feel like in a way it's a good thing because there's such sort of high racing standards that are expected. Yeah. And so we can't fall short of that. Like the player base, of course, Polyphony Digital, and even ourselves, we have to meet those standards mm -hmm. uh, given sort of, you know, what we've shown Sophie to be able to do. Yeah. And um, while those standards are quite high, it's great that we're able to sort of, you know, get very close to those levels. Yeah. So <laughs> AI in general is, you know, moving incredibly fast right now. I mean, it's just, it's, it's exploding. I don't think we've ever seen anything like it uh, in, in any, any dimension. Um, so I'm curious as experts, 
in this field? What what developments are most interesting to you guys? What gets you really excited when you when you open your email and you find out the latest that other AI researchers are working on or the latest uh, you know systems or developments? What uh, what what are you uh, excited about right now? And uh, are there any particular recent developments that you see uh, could be implemented with uh, Gran Turismo Sophie in the future? So Sophie is a reinforced learning project. So it's, it is an agent trained through reinforced learning. So we are looking f um, at the list mostly about the papers uh, based on like uh, reinforced learning research. But fortunately, reinforced learning is now very popular uh, machine learning domain. And it, it is actually used in a wide variety of applications. So you're reading so many papers. Uh, because everyone is actually using reinforced learning in different uh, use cases. So the, all, each of those is actually developing, uh, making reinforced learning better. Then we are trying to uh, get some advancements from other domains to bring it to GDSAPI to make it better as well. So yeah, that's probably what we're doing. Yeah, the, the I guess, speed of improvement and progress is amazing just to sort of see as you mentioned, Jordan, when you open like email or you just sort of look up papers, they're like that reading list is just ever growing. I don't think there's a time where I've looked at my reading list and it's been empty. There's just no chance of that. And so the, the speed of progress has been so amazing that as Takuma mentioned, reinforcement learning specifically, where sort of researchers are trying to find ways to make the algorithms more efficient, trying to find ways in which it can solve more challenging problems. I would say on our side for GD Sophie, one of the things that we are particularly interested in is trying to find ways in which we can make the training more, let's say, efficient. What that means is, can we train faster? Can we train with fewer resources? Um, sort of that process is something that's going to benefit us all because, you know, right now we have a certain amount of time that we take, a certain amount of data that goes in. Any savings that we can get with that just allows us to iterate faster and faster and so on and so forth. And so along those lines, if there's progress on that front uh, from the research community, we are actively looking to see if that's something we can use uh, for the next GT Sophie. Yeah, wow, that's very exciting. Yeah, I can't imagine how you how you balance your work that you need to do and actually get done with just trying to stay on top of your area of expertise. That just must be, <laughs> there's not enough hours in the day, I'm sure. Divide and conquer, that's all we do. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Time management. Very important these days. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to thank both of you so much for coming on here to chat with us. Super interesting discussion. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with next. I was not expecting car tuning to come to Gran Turismo <laughs> no. Sophie. So I don't know what I don't know what we're going to have next. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if you want to make any news, if you want to make any headlines. Sophie 2.2. <laughs> <If you wanna. laughs> this is your chance <laughs> we really appreciate all the sort of feedback and comments on the gd planet uh, sort of board it's been amazing to see all the different things players have been trying and sharing their experience with the larger player base and it's been positive experience overall and it's been fantastic for us to sort of read through and, and learn about what players uh, are experiencing it's been great yeah it's great to see really Absolutely. exciting stuff yeah well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll have you uh, back again sometime soon. Sure thing. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. Thanks, Chaz. Thank, thank you. you. See you guys.